Hi, I'm Dr. Corey Funk here at the Institute for Systems Biology, where I'm a senior research scientist. The digital twins uh, first came from the aerospace industry uh, where they needed to model jet engines. And so the idea there is with a jet engine, uh, if you want to fly it in a plane, safety is sort of a priority. So you want to make sure that everything is properly stress test over time. So what they did was uh, they would take uh, computer models and with a jet engine, everything is sort of designed from the ground up. So you know all of the different forces and pressures and temperatures that are uh, happening within a jet engine. And they integrated that into a model. And with that model, they could then run simulations. And those simulations could be over the lifetime of an engine. And they could do that really quickly. Uh, and so it became a very useful thing for them because in modeling that, they could then design those engines in better ways and try and understand how parts might fail, fail and how other parts might uh, sort of improve performance. Yeah, so the idea of a digital twin in medicine is, uh, is really sort of the concept of being able to, again, sort of model, uh, in this case, instead of a jet engine, uh, an individual, a person. And so one of the challenges is with science is that when we do experiments, we really only have a short window of time where we can uh, observe somebody's health. So the idea of a, a digital twin or a model would enable us to run a simulation over the entire course of someone's lifetime. And so this can give us uh, information uh, on uh, you know, different ages and how people are, are impacted uh, at different times of their life and uh, how things could be modified in terms of their lifestyle interventions or choices. Yeah, so uh, ISBA really has two uh, main endeavors uh, within digital twins, and the first is in cancer. So one of the challenges with cancer is uh, really understanding how a patient might respond to a, a particular drug. And so with a digital twin, if you, if you have and understand all the different parameters of, a, of tumor growth uh, and you know, the type of tumor that it is, you in theory can sort of uh, understand how they might respond to a drug treatment. Um, and so this is one of the challenges with, with cancer drugs is that um, there's quite a varied response with those, with those drug treatments. And so the idea of a digital twin would give you an idea how an individual might behave uh, or in response to a treatment, or also how an entire population might behave. If you wanted to sort of stratify or understand how a particular drug could help some people, but maybe not all people, you want to identify those things, that, uh, those factors that would determine whether somebody would be a good responder or a poor responder. A second area in which we're working on, uh, an area that I work in, as with Alzheimer's. So again, I mentioned that uh, you know, experimentally we typically only uh, can study a person for a few years or gather data. And so you want to know, especially with a, drug, uh, a disease like Alzheimer's, uh, where the, the uh, period of time before you get symptoms uh, can be up to 25 years. And so to be able to model that uh, can be really helpful. Uh, digital twins have really just kind of scratched the surface right now. Um, we're really only learning how we can uh, create them, what kinds of things we need to measure in order to create a complex system that represents you know, real biology and, and, and a, a real living person. Um, what we have yet to do is really be able to tie somebody's genetics to, to these models. So right now, uh, we're not able to stratify people based on their, their genes, especially with a complex disease like Alzheimer's, where there's you know, over 40 different uh, genetic loci, uh, places in the genome, that are implicated in the disease. Um, so what we are trying to do uh, is be able to connect those, those genes so that we can personalize treatments for Alzheimer's, and again, try and find effective treatments for individuals. Uh, and again, the same idea of what you know for one person might not be true for an entire population. So, and then flip that around, how one treatment might affect a certain subset of a population, but not everybody. What gets me excited about Digital Twins is it creates new opportunities or strategies to think about a complex disease. Um, you know, for example, with one drug, one drug might not work, but in a you know, combination of drugs might work. And Digital Twins give you the opportunity to see what two drugs or three drugs or a combination of drugs or drugs coupled with you know, lifestyle interventions could do. Um, I think another thing too is, you know, in terms of what digital twins can tell us, they could actually help us learn about the biology of Alzheimer's. So it's not just we try and you know, see what treatments are effective, but we actually try and understand what's going on in the brain. And this is again an area uh, in Alzheimer's research where people have really struggled. 
Um, we've known that the key gene that's implicated in Alzheimer's is APOE. We've known that that uh, is the strongest genetic association for over 30 years now. Again, we haven't been able to do really anything with that information in terms of clinically uh, actionable uh, decisions. Uh, so being able to potentially find you know, how to use that information and integrate that into uh, and affect people's lives is, is something that's, that's really exciting.